thirdly, it was also very clear among, from among the participants that the registration process for collective rights, but even for private individual rights to forests, is long and onerous. And this process has to be made faster so that communities are able to get the rights that have been granted them by law, but also be able to exercise those rights in order to generate value from the resource. Securing tenure for a forest estate in Uganda is under two ministries. The Minister of Lands, which has a role to play, and the Minister of Water and Environment. The Minister of Land gives you the title to that particular resource or the land where the resource is situated. And the Minister of Water and Environment should come up and declare a resource as a community forest. So there's been back and forth between these two institutions which I think then calls for some kind of harmonization in the process, probably to have a one-stop center for that, that kind of um, arrangement. Because while you move through the process under the Minister of Lands, you have to move a parallel process under the Minister of Water, and they never move at the same pace. So for the case we have, we have the land title to the forest, but the forest is not a community forest. It hasn't been declared. So it's, it's like it's a yes and no for the communities. So we see that as a big encumbrance in the process of formalizing some of these tenure reforms in the country. Those guidelines detail uh, the different steps, 11 steps of, uh, that you go through to register and also declare for us. So we needed to, uh, we need them to be disseminated widely because the feeling from the meeting was that they are known only to a few people and therefore the other parties cannot uh, move this any stage forward because they don't have uh, a good idea of uh, what in, is entailed in those guidelines. When they are registered, then their tenure security is secured or enhanced. And when that happens, then you should be able to manage this forest well because it comes along with good forest management plans that have been developed. So if they're not registered, and of course there are many opportunities, there are many benefits of registration. The fact that it can be, when you're registered, then you're known and therefore your trade, uh, your chain of custody for products traded from your forest is actually also clear and therefore you are sort of an authentic uh, forest owner. So there are many benefits in addition to, to that that we can, uh, we can detail. The guidelines need to be disseminated. What does that mean? It means holding workshops in the different localities of the country and at the same time translating them in some local languages so that people can get them and come up uh, to do uh, what we want to do. There was also a thinking that um, they are too long, that um, it calls for so much from the communities that there is a need to shorten them. Uh, so that one needs to be done and I think to a certain extent with collaborative forest management, some steps have been taken uh, to say, they are, uh, you know, to make the process a little bit simpler. So we made a recommendation for the minister to submit what needs to be registered. Minister of Lands promised that they are going to work on them and by December they ought to be having certificates, whatever it takes they need they will be issued out.